Welcome back to Mangler's Harem here, we're going to continue in Final Fantasy XIV. Sounds like it's already up. There we go. Alright. Don't worry about the picture, it'll get better as it gets brighter outside. It's just dark and it's confused about shadows and stuff. Uh, it's I set it up during the day and I don't have a nighttime setting. One day I'll probably get to that. Sorry. Alright, we are continuing on sulf sulfic studies. We're trying to look at these green little guys called sulfies. Um, I'm just going to kind of follow where it tells me to go. Tells me to go back down here. Okay, so I'll go southeast. I played a couple games of uh, Triple Triad in the city. That's why I'm all over here. I can move a ways away. Actually, I can use my chocobo. Brand new chocobo. supposed to know everything, or forgotten more than you never know. I don't know if you ever heard that term before. Rolf Hawthorne, patriarch of the beekeeping Hawthorne family, is said to be well versed in the sylphic customs. Come to learn a thing or two about the sylphs. S have you? I'll tell you one thing, they're a peculiar folk. How peculiar you ask? Well, just let me tell you. There, there, er, <clears throat> beg pardon, friend. My memory's just not what it used to be. I've seen much and more in my adventuring days, and it's all a clutter in my noggin now. Though I've shared my stories with those around the hut before, you might just have more luck with that. The Sylphs. Yes, fathers told me the stories plenty of times. What I've always found most captivating is how their concept of etiquette is almost completely alien to our own. You do best not to underestimate them on account of their childlike looks, lest your face might end up in a mess of glyphs, squiggles, and chocobo scratches. Tee hee! Alright, so don't make them mad. Sylphs, inveterate tricksters and troublemakers, that's what they are. One day they're drawing marble faces on our masks, next they're sending our young sentries falling to the bottom of the ravine. Tell them to stop and they'll just laugh at you. Rolf claims they harbor no ill will, but I dare say such pranks are no laughing matter. The quickest way to a quiver woman's heart might be through her stomach, but don't even think of trying to foist your food steps on a silk. They sustain themselves simply by bathing in the sun, or so Rolf once told me. This is Vivian. Viva. Vivandier. I am tasked with keeping the people in and around Jaws and Spire supply. Talk to three people, they're kind of troublemakers. 
Oh, of course, of course. Hearing your stories, well, my stories, has brought the memories flooding back to me. I, I feel like dancing. Stands up and dances. Yes, nothing brings people together quite like a little toe tapping. A sylph told me long ago that dancing is a time-honored greeting among the, their kind. You'll do well to remember this. It just may help you in the favor of the forest friends. Oh, I have to dance in front of them? Is that what they're doing this Alright, level 34. I'm racking them up. Rolf Hawthorne would share further knowledge of to assist you in befriending the sylphs. Oh, still here, eh? Great, one more thing you should know about the sylphs. They don't take kindly to guests who show up empty-handed. To earn their trust, you'd do well to bring a, uh, uh, rat. What was it again? My wife Rosa and I were just speaking in this matter not days ago. Forgive me, friend. Speak to Rosa at the comb. Her memory should prove more reliable than mine. Alright, so where is that? It's way over there. offering for the sylphs. Were it anyone else, I'd recommend a jar of honey, but I fear they wouldn't get you past their front doorstep here. Now their tastes run more to the unusual. Or are you perchance familiar with milk root? That's what they call the root of the most fiendish seed kin, the ochu. When chewed, it exudes a cloudy liquid that's said to induce curious visions in the imbiber. You'd not catch me dead trying this stuff, but the sylphs seem to enjoy it to no end. I've not seen a no chew around the cold in quite some time, but I did encounter a suspicious clump of grass the other day, where you to simulate it, stimulate it somehow with some kind of amber syrup. Or, for example, you might be surprised at what comes next. Good luck. Alright, so we have to fight an Ochu, probably. Or, it's a rough protection. Curious tussle. Brings to life. Okay. Not too bad. Slate. Can we pick up something from it? Give the milk root to Rolf. Okay, we're going back. able to direct you to a suitable offering. 
No crew, but of course, those silks quaff that cloudy stuff as quick as I do a flagon of mead. And the effect's just about the same as well. At any rate, a gifted milk root will have the sylphs calling you friend and brother the moment they lay eyes on it. Now let me wrap that up for you. I'm starting to feel a bit boozy. Offering this gift wrap you're offering in preparation for your journey into the sylphs' domains. I've taken the liberty of wrapping your milk root, root well and good. This should be this should keep it nice and fresh, not to mention spare you from the god wrongful stench. The sylphs love the stuff, but me, I'd rather bury my nose in a chocobo gum. I dare say the reek even rivals the breath of the marble that put an end to my adventuring days. Wow. Can I tell you that story another time? You have more important things to attend to today. The Sylphs are an eccentric bunch, but I've shared my clear company enough to know that they're kind at heart. They'll not shun one whose intentions are true. May you, your parlay be a fruitful one, friend. And do stop by on your return with a flag and a full flower mead with your name on it if you'd regale me with your adventuring tips. <clears throat> ah, and before I forget, don't go traipsing off just yet. Ameline here would have a word with you. Travel in safety, friend, and do pass along my regards to the winged one. It's good to see your knowledge of sulfur culture is matured. I see no reason to delay your mission any further. Upon your arrival at Little Solace, seek out a young sylph by the name of Humoxio. He has served as an intermediary between our peoples on many an occasion and has the close ear of his tribe's elder. I see that Hawthorne has furnished you with some of the more glorious root the sylphs so adore. I have something of greater import for you to deliver, a missive from the elder seats here herself. To summarize the letter's contents in brief, it vouches for the integrity of our envoy. That would be you, and restates Gardenia's desire to maintain a harmonious relationship with the long-standing friends of the forest. The war with the Ixal has proven to take toll on our resources. We can ill afford to get mired in another conflict. I need not impress upon you any further the importance of this mission. May the Twelve see you return with good night. <clears throat> so hard, so free fun. You like dancing, right? You dance sprightly for Kumuxio. Ignore you. Walking one is not familiar to this one. This one does not trust strange walking one. Strange dancing ones might be a different story, but this one expects no such thing. Walking one should go home and leave this one be. I just danced for you, dude. Ignore me. It is a little bit tedious. I should have, like, accepted any version of it. It has to be to this screen. This one would welcome walking ones. We move like this one, these ones. If walking one would talk to this one, this one will answer. This one is a busy one, so walking one should speak with quick tone. Walking 
Pokemon would bring gift to this one, walking one is most kind. Walking one brings me milk root. Milk root fills one this one with great joy. This sounds like a bird in game. This one gives thanks. It gives many, many thanks. Talking about himself in the third person. Walking one carries message for Elder One. This one will deliver this message to Elder One. Walking one should not worry. Hello there. We're envoys from Virginia, and we're here to treat with our people. Hi. You come to pay respects to our elder, and to learn from him more of your Lord Rama. What are these ones? Did these walking ones come from Virginia? Walking one became a dancing one and brought milk fruit. But walking one tricks this one. This one does not like tricks. This one will speak no more. Elder one is busy. Walking one should go home. To go home, you say? But the sylphs of little solace have always welcomed Gridanian envoys with open wings. <coughs> The letter carried by Mangler here is an oath of peace penned by the Elder Seeds here herself. Still, you would refuse us? This one's reasons are no business of Walking One's. Elder One has no words for Gridania. Walking One wastes everyone's time. Well, I never turned away at the gates. Whatever did we do to deserve such a rude welcome? Was Mangler's jig insufficiently jiggy? I'm as baffled as you, but something tells me recent events have our erstwhile fluttery friends feeling uncommonly wary. It would seem we have no choice but to ask around and see how we could might run our trust. Alright, I'm not silencing, sleeping, or paralyzing. I kinda like sleeping. Ida has a notion of how we might earn the self's trust. Say, Mangler, are you in a mood for dancing? That's right, dancing. You went through all the trouble to learn the self's traditional greeting, but you've greeted hardly, hardly any of them. If I were a self, I'd be bedside myself with delight to see an adventurer expression any interest in my culture. Me? Of course, I'd be happy to join. Ow, ow. There go these, those bloody leg cramps of mine, backing up again. Walking one's belly is rumbling. This one is not making a meal. This one is boiling bark and flowers, seeds it to die through. Color must be jolly, and so must treat me. Dance sprightly. Ooh, walking one knows jolly dance. Jolly dance fills the ones with good cheer. Let these two be friends. Ones? This one is overjoyed, but this one, this one keeps the ways of weaving a secret. Even if walking one learned a secret, walking one could not weave in the same way. Walking one is a friend to these ones. Friendly like the gracious elder one of Forest City knows how to dance into these one's hearts. <laughs> now 
Mangler. Would you like to hear the good news or the better news? <clears throat> the good news is that your lovely dancing has brought smiles and high spirits to all of Little Solace. The better news? Why, I've thoroughly recovered from those accursed leg cramps. Onward to our next adventure. Fate field. That's my little Question pick. Papalimo has a notion of how you might endear yourself to the sylphs of little salts. Mangler is an adventurer, you're no stranger to helping distressed folk. I Ranger. Tales of good deeds are quick to spread. The adventurer who comes to the aid of the local populace can go from stranger to hero overnight. No doubt you see where I'm getting at. The sylphs who made their home in little solace do so having been given from their driven from their living home. Surely they have their fair share of troubles. Seeking out troubled sylphs and see what might be done to ease their worries. A sound plan, would you not say? That said, the sylphs are not known to share their worries with outsiders. You'd be better off inquiring with your media of the Brigadians who reside here. She is most likely to be privy to the self troubles. Praise be to the elements. I cannot express how happy I am to see an adventurer with a truly gentle heart. The sylphs of Little Solace are sorely in need of aid. Pray hear me out. Being a temporary settlement, Little Solace wants for amenities, not least a stout set of defenses. Consequently, beasts from walls around are free to wander and terrorize the hapless residents. The Ziz Gorlins and the Gaul Nats that roam these parts are especially troublesome, but slaying one of each should serve as a warning for the rest. Furthermore, perhaps you could gather three brownie bushes as well. They play an important role to social culture. I do not claim to know the details, but what with such feral beasts prowling the forest, they are not easy to become easy to come by. Whether you're done with the whether you're done with the deeds, seek out Camusio. He is slow to warm to outsiders, but your good intentions will not be lost on him. My own experience speaks for this. Alright, so collect three and kill two. Like a million after that. Okay. Well, 
got gold nets for a giant net. You're too small. They only keep track of stuff I kill a lot. Is still here? Dancing one can dance all night. This one's trust is not so easily earned. Hmm, dancing one brings brownie bushes for this one. This one can dive for red once more. This one is pleased. Dancing one kills bitey buzzy one. This one hates hate hates bitey buzzy ones. Dancing one is kind, too kind. Many walking ones come to one's abode. But few are friendly like dancing one. Perhaps this one was wrong not to trust this trust dancing one after all. Lucio Rosalis will trust you with the text. This one asks dancing one for forgiveness. These ones have many troubles since walking ones last came to our hook. 
This one must be careful, always careful. The dancing one is not like other walking ones. This one can trust dancing one. This one would ask dancing one for help. Strange ones walk with bodies of steel. Strange ones with bodies of steel come to the home of these ones. This one thinks steel ones come from Empire. Where Empire goes, many living ones become dead ones. Trees fall and bushes burn. These ones' home is in danger. Danger. This one begs a dancing one to help this one no more. Dancing one is friends with these ones and walking ones. Yes. Dancing one must speak to these ones here and walking ones in the hut house and find out more. This one has bad feeling. This one fears steel ones are after something. But this one should speak no more. Go dancing one. This one depends on kindness of dancing one. Shush, the sign says steel ones, walking ones are scary, like touched ones. This one hates scary, and scary ones have scary friends. Yes, this one has seen. Steel walking ones carry big boxes. Maybe walking ones hunt for shiny treasure. This one likes treasure. Strange armor? Why, now that you mention it, I did see some suspicious types of late. They were gathering deep in the forest. I simply assumed they were adventurers. Fearsome types clad head to toe in steel, you say? Imperial soldiers, no doubt. I couldn't tell you what they were plotting, I'm sure it's nothing good.
one is happy to see Dancing One return. What did Dancing One learn? This one sees. Steel walking ones come from Empire. Carry boxes and go walking deep, deep through trees. As this one thought, steel walking ones are up to nesting other things. This one moves towards well. Steel walking ones try to hide, but this one will find them. This one will, will borrow Dancing One's map. This one makes mark right here. This is where Steel Ones hide. This one knows. Dancing One will go looking for Steel Ones, yes? I suppose. Sense a hostile presence. Oh. Dancing one's back. This one breathes sigh of relief. This one's worried. Mm -hmm. Dancing one found something? Dancing one found paper inside a box? This is a message from Empire. This one can read walking one symbols. The message paper has names of food and rocks. Food and rocks were inside boxes, this one knows. But this one does not understand. Food and rocks mentioned all come from home of these ones. How does steel walking ones know to find them? Is there a sneaky one holding behind this one's wings? Snooping one selling secrets to steel walking ones? This one fears that the is for this one's home. But dancing one has helped this one much today. Dancing one must promise to always be friend to these ones. Ether or potion, we don't have any names of this one. Mucio is pining for a wayward friend. <laughs> helpful ones arrive helpful one arrives at a good time. This one needs helpful one's help. One of these ones named Clexio ventured outside little Sol's Alone. Alone is unsafe. Helpful one must find Claxio. Claxio struck west after leaving the settlement. Hurry before Claxio ends up in the valley of the beast. Now. I'm gonna increase the light of the punches a little bit. A little lighter. I actually see 
blocking one wants this one to return to Little Solace. I'll make this one laugh. This one is worried, weary of living with those who are not these ones. This one wants to be alone. These ones rely on walking ones for everything. No better than those ones that summoned a primal one. Small wonder this one chose to leave. This one thought this a like, likely place to build a home. But then meddling one arrives, forces this one to go deeper into the forest. Meddling one is forbidden from following this one. Away this with meddling one. This guy needs a step counter. What? Claxio refused to return to these ones and went deeper into the forest? But this one saw touched ones lurking in the forest. Helpful one with hurry. Hurry and find Claxio. Helpful ones would search for spools of thread on the forest floor. Those things will lead helpful one to Claxio. But hurry, hurry before one before touch points take the Klaxio away. stuff. I'm gonna downgrade me about nine, eight levels. That means this will be a little bit harder than typical, typical fights. Meddling one's back. This one told meddling one to be gone. Tell Komuxio that this one will never go back. Never. Touched ones, touched ones should go away too. This one is good one. Everyone should just leave this one alone. <clears throat> the unguard Mingo. These cells have been tempered. Brought under the thrall of the primal realm. Akin to the Amalgia, tempered by Ifrit, these cells exist only to serve their deity. They will not answer to words, only steal. I take no pleasure in this, but it must be done. Oh, it's not great. 
Ini This one is safe. This one was so scared. Claxio. This one's been worried. So very worried. Is Claxio unharmed? Still in possession of wits? Kakamuxio. A meddling one as well. Why are these two here? These two came to rescue Claxio. That Claxio is safe. Fills this one with joy. Kamuxio, forgive this one. This one did not mean to run away from Little Solace. This one was just afraid. These ones who live at Little Solace were changing, becoming friendly with other ones. This one feared that these ones were getting, forgetting who these ones are, like touched ones did. But the one was wrong. This one can see that now. Meddling or er, helpful one. This one is grateful. This one will return to Little Solace to be with Kamuxio and Kermio. Well, that one see to it. That should see to it. <clears throat> what say we return to Little Solace as well? I, for one, could do with a nice hot bath. Why does this one have a little thing on it? What's that little design mean? Thought Claxio was lost forever. Helpful one saved Claxio. Now these ones can be family again. <clears throat> this one has known many walking ones, even many kind walking ones. But helpful one is kindest and strongest of all. Helpful one is a hero of these ones. Helpful one will bring these ones and help walking ones closer together. This one knows. This one has been would take helpful one to see elder one. But other one is, other one is... Press complete, that's what other one is. Mount speed has increased, okay. Wow, I was just talking about how slow I was. Oh, that's it. Mupsio would make a confession to you. Ah, oh, mount speed everywhere. This one must ask kind ones forgiveness. This one make a promise to take kind one to see elder one, yes? But this one cannot. This one cannot because elder one is not here. Elder one is not anywhere. Elder one went into the forest yesterday but has not come back. This one's worried. Elder one often goes in the forest but never, never for this long. Kind one will help find elder one, yes? Near where Elder One disappeared is the home of the walking one named Buskaran. Buskaran may know what happened to Elder One. <clears throat> this one can talk to Buskaran. But walking one does not, do not always trust these ones. 
the kind one talked to Buster Rowan for this one. The kind one comes from Bredania, yes? In Bredania, we have many kind ones, yes? This one begs a more kind one. Go to Bredania, ask fellow kind ones for help. Please hurry, these ones are not safe until after one of Alright, Adder's Nest, that's close to my return point. Isn't our intrepid ambassador? How fair are your diplomatic efforts with the Sylph tribes? Your elder one's gone missing, you say? Why? If it were up, if it were to end up in the hands of the tempered ones, we'd have a crisis on our hands. You can assure the Sylphs that my sharp-eyed serpents will be on the lookout day and night. No stone must be left unturned. I would ask you to call upon Nia Molko at Bent Branch Meadows to deliver the message. That the wood whalers are ne excuse me, needed in the search effort. We pup no longer. Vorsail Heliox Helio would have you begin your training in earnest. Listen well, Private Mike. The Order of the Twin Adder does not just welcome glory seekers willy nilly into our ranks. We stand here today because we believe in your potential. We believe that you should go forth, you will go forth as a serpent and help restore order to a world gone mad. And yet, potential alone will not carry you far. Indeed, the road to glory is littered with the bodies of would-be heroes who lack the determination and diligence to hone their innate talents. But you will not suffer the same fate, I am certain of it. It is with such high hopes that your future, for your future, that I will send you to begin the next phase of your training. The venue shall be the Wolf's Den, a proving ground established by the Eorzean Alliance to prepare grand company recruits for the battles of Lionel. The Wolf's Den is to be found just off the shores of Lenosha, a ferry at the Morley Dry Docks in Lower Lenosha. Will grant you passage there. I think that's over by the room somewhere. Upon your arrival, seek out Storm Captain Berkoya Lotalsin. I have already taken the liberty of submitting a letter of recommendation on your behalf. I'm not doing that one. I'm going to be spirited along the long, long here. That's all the way in Vent Branch. Well, I just have to wait. This one's fine. Yeah. Let's see if we go. 158, there's one that's got that. Message from Commander Helio. You say? The Sylph Elder has vanished? Worry not, friend. The wood whalers have eyes under every leaf behind every branch. 
If the elder is anywhere in these forests, we shall find him. Alright, so we gotta go way down here and talk to him. And we need to probably attend to that warrior here. Good morrow to you, sir. What can I... Ah, you wish to know about the auctions. Very well, allow me to explain. There is a growing concern for our immigration policies. It may have been a tad restrictive in the past. Uh, so the seat to your council and the order of the Tunnetter have, with the blessing of the elementals, decreed that the lavender beds be set aside for adventurers. Adventurers who possess the necessary funds to purchase and maintain their estates, that is. Should you look upon the beds with your own eyes now, I think you agree it's well worth the price. Have a word with our skipper over yonder, she'll ferry you across. A recruit stationed at the pier will tell you more about the beds once you've arrived. To proceed, you have to go to a residential ward at the level of beds. Or you could just not. I am not distracted. We will continue. Almost there. Can we go to the mill first, he will share. Well met, adventurer. We have the finest grog and grub this side of... Hey, Not here to fill your belly, then. Ah, hunger for news, is it? Hi, there must... There's been talk of a sylph lurking about hereabouts. But I couldn't rightly say if it be the elder you seek. These woodland scamps all look alike. Short of painting one red and another one blue, most folk would struggle to tell two of them apart. If you've the time, mayhap you could stay a while and see what the gods have in store. You never know, you might even be even stumble across the silk elevator or something. Muscaron could use an adventurer to douse a fight brewing at his establishment. No word on the silk elder yet, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. In the meantime, how about doing a favorable Muscaron in return? Right then. Let's put you to work. 
There's a customer outside who's spoiling for a fight, and I need you to cool him off for me. No need to go cracking any skulls though, just take this tub of cold water and douse the drunker. Tends to be the trick. My patrons can swill grog all night and throw it out loud enough to wake the dead if they wish. <clears throat> but as soon as it turns violent, I'll go put my boot down. What are you staring at? You want to keep them eyes in your face? Treats. That's cold. What do you mean no fighting? This dusk white scum was... Yeah, yeah, no devils. That bastard gets to the skin for now. <laughs> Nicely done, Mangler. I'll not have my patrons picking fights with each other over a bit of petty prejudice. In case you didn't see, the bloke who caught the brunt of the outburst is a dust white alanism. These are people who shun the cities to live in the wilds, making them no better than brigands in the eyes of men. To be fair, the dust whites can be an unruly lot, but they ain't so bad once you get to know them. And it doesn't seem right to bar a whole race of people from the drivers for the misdeeds of few. There should be at least one place where anyone willing to pay a coin and take a piece of welcome to the chicken. You never get a chicken egg? Price of the game is not. The autonomous proprietor of Bus Grunts Brothers has need of an able adventure. I appreciate all the good you've done for our patrons. If you aren't disinclined, I have a favor to ask of my own. There is Chicharin, friend of mine, you see, name of Chicharin, a good lad. It was right after the calamity that I came across him falling in the trap. He nearly died in all the heaven. So I took him in and nursed him back to health the best I could. He worked here at my brother's for a sm spell after that. Got to talking about striking out on his own, he did. Not long after cast his lot with the merchant bound for the notion. Well, it just so happened I got the cleaning up around here, came across something of his, the scarlet earring. I know this he was fond of this thing, but he must have just forgotten it when he left. So I'd like to see that it gets to him. Can't say for sure where he ended up, but might be a friend of mine being a road Rogadin fellow named Bainsing. You can find him on Hawker's Alley in Lynch Lemonson. He knows everything in the comings and goings of the merchant. Alright, so I have to go to Lemonson. <coughs> Alright, let's go to this crystal first and then we'll fly to Lumsilimitsa. 
because of the engine just worked in it. Wonder if I would have to do that. If we look at the map, we want to go to Lens and Lens. Let's see. That would be crazy far. Fall Gord Float with a star in it? What's the star? Oh, discount price? I'm tempted to go to. Tranquil, which is unattuned. Let's go to Tranquil and then we'll go. My little feisty little chocobo. Hey, hey, let's go to that one too. Little feisty chocobo. Street south, go through all that. And then we'll go to Lens and Scent of something. Unmistakable smell of chocobo clings to your adventure. Why do I be correct in assuming you have your own trusty seed? Aye, I thought so. Now tell me, is your bird battle trained? If not, you might consider seeking the advice of Le Quilat over at Bent Branch Meadows. The Ishigardian native is something of a prodigy in all matters concerning our fine feathered friends. You should be able to help you attain greater affinity with your bird. Seriously, I've come all the way here to see the back. Grant Branch Mail is here, isn't it? That's a long walk. I'm lazy and walk. And that's fine. We're gonna run out of money until I teleport. Name 
Just here. Greetings, adventure. Is there something you need? You wish to have your chocobo trained in combat? This is no small request you make. Riding your bird is one thing, asking it to take hurts in your name is another. I'll help you train your chocobo, but on the promise that you will never unduly expose it to danger. Do I have your word? No. <laughs> Very well. To begin, I'll need a bunch of gish geishal greens. You have my leave to pick it from the fields yonder. Return here when you have it. Take one. Have you acquired the greens? Superb. Then we shall get straight to it. Doubtless you already know this, but chocobos are highly fond of Gaisho greens. They love the leafy vegetables so much, in fact, that they will forget completely forget their fears in the face of danger. Thus, by feeding these birds these greens, you can prevail upon it to fight beside you. <clears throat> and then, once called, it will be up to you to direct its actions as you see fit. You'll find that these your chocobo innately responds to a number of general commands. Give your bird an order, and it will act accordingly, and to the best of its ability. This simple yet effective methodology was developed by the Four Camps family, one of the foremost houses in Ishgrad. Right. And that concludes your lesson. Of course, if you if it is not enough to merely hear about the car, so you must venture forth and attempt it yourself. Summon your chocobo with a bunch of Kaisho greens, and together make your way to Storo Haven. The broad <coughs> the brood is that your prowl the area ought to be a suitable challenge for you and your companion. Put down three of them and return here. And lastly, by way of advice, I recommend you keep an ample supply of gacha rings on your person at all times. Our resident vendor will be able to provide you with as much as you can carry. In addition to riding him, you can also summon your chocobo to fight alongside you. Awesome! To do so, you will first require a bunch of gacha greens, chocobo favorite and the purchasing sports. To summon your chocobo, simply use the greens. Chocobos gain experience points and grow just as you do in combat, but they can only fight in the same places in which they are can be ridden. <coughs> when traveling the wor world <coughs> alone, your feathered companion may turn the tide when fighting enemies of a comparable level. Alright, so I need some greens. And I'm supposed to be fighting some stuff. West of here. So, do I have any greens? I do. Let's put these greens in my. Alright, let's go to that area and then we'll fight.
<clears throat> Here we go. Ordering your chocolate. Once summoned, you'll remain for 30 minutes. Unless he gets hurt. Give your commands, orders. Order him to auto attack. Select free stance. You can dismiss. Anytime but click and withdraw. Another bunch will summon him. Okay, so character. No, guy, no. No, companion. Yes, free stance. Chocobo's rank increases, he'll get SP. At this point, he can be acquired new specific actions and traits. Three different skill trees Defender, Attacker, or Healer. You definitely could go for Defender for me. When your Chocobo acquires his first skill for any of these trees, also learns three stance. By activating Defender, he'll get turned it into Defensive Mind. Attacking Offensive Force. Healer, Restoring your HP rather than helping you battle. <clears throat> How you choose to use them is not up to you. But remember, once action or traits been purchased, you can't undo it. Think about how you wish to progress. Okay, let's think. Okay. Skills. Alright, what can we do with Defender? Attack. Increases my strength. Increases my oh his own HP. His own strength, his own HP. Deliver an attack. Increases his own accuracy. Increases his critical hit. Reduces damage taken by him. Increases his strength. Increases his HP again. Okay, so that's just defending making himself strong. <clears throat> We're under attack here. Will you defend me? Help me, Chocobo. Oh my gosh, you are not helping. Alright, I call you to ride you 
I went down to one pit. I guess I didn't die. Oh, scary. My heart almost stopped. I felt her so far apart. successfully negotiated your first few battles with Chocobo? Well done. Tell me, how did it feel? Was it not surprisingly reassuring fighting with your familiar companion? Slightly. Your Chocobo can make up for your shortcomings or build upon your strengths. Indeed, there are countless ways the two of you might complement one another. Through some experimentation, you will come to find the approach that serves you best. Before I forget, I have one last part of you. The saddlebag for your joke about carrying our submarines about can be quite cumbersome. After all, and there should be sufficient room for your personal belonging should the need arise. I pray it serves you well in the box. Alright. Can't use it in the dungeon. Mm. Alright. Go to character, Chocobo Saddlebag. Let's put some stuff in here. What are we gonna sell? The materia? No plan on using that anytime soon. Orchestration and list. I don't even know what that is, so I'm gonna put it over here. Look at this stuff, I probably won't need anything soon if I will. Okay. Maybe the bag's got stuff in there. to go to Hopper's Alley and Lenzo Mensa. We also want to put our saddle in here. Because we want to use it. Somebody following me. Look at that. I know there. Alright, we are going to return and then we'll take a turn fly on the airship over to the and then we need to get a Hawker's Alley. on everything overnight. All over the blankets. It's still below freezing right now. 
sci-fi looking one, that's why you can see me there. We got a package last night, and we threw it in the ditch. Couldn't find it. This morning, or last night. <coughs> Found your way to Ocker's Alley, friend. Hmm? A teacher in what worked at the Druthers. I, you speak of Tetarun. Related to the Kyokurun <clears throat> bloke, just go over there, buy some blood or an Two of them put in together and were making good coin. But old Tetarun in left Limsa not long ago. Couldn't say as to why or where. <clears throat> Better off asking Kukarun himself. And he can be tight of lip, though, I warn you. Best to take this chicken egg with you. The little bastard loves the bloody things. Heh. <laughs> Good to hear about old Boosk, though. Sounds as though he ain't <clears throat> chicken. <clears throat> Sounds as though he ain't changed a bit. Just like him to send a venture home. Too shy to come his own self. Gosh, I miss drinking with that boy. Customer be welcome. Not customer. Not come with custom. Kukuru and busy with business, too busy to blab for blather. Chicken egg. Kukuru and love chicken egg. Love chicken egg more than love customer. Looking for Titaroon? Titaroon. No here, no more. 
Teeter and leave limbs out. Teeter and go look for sparkles. Now working for a trading post. Good trading post. Forget where trading post is. Weinberg, no teeter. Weinberg, no trading post. Weinberg at fairy dots. Go to fairy dots. Kikaroo and forget things. Weinberg, remember things. You talk to Weinberg, not Kikaroo. headed somewhere up north, by way of the ferry to Alicorn. Might as well head there, see what you can suss out. The skipper here can take you there. When you arrive, I start by asking Aldfoot. He's an old hand who knows a great deal about a great many things. Ferry bound for Alicorn, are you riding with us? Yeah. I can afford it, only 40 though. Forty is like pocket change. In the beginning it used to be like expensive, we pay 40 to borrow a chocobo and have like crazy we might as well walk. Saw him, that is to say, I seen him. He took himself north through Skull Valley into Oakwood. I was looking at a place run by his fellow Chichern. I reckon he might be, he might the one, he meant the one right on the shore of Bronze Lake, Nimaroon's trading post. Follow the road, you're sure to find it.
Realist the cart. Caterer. Customer, be welcome. Not customer, not from the customer. Bring something for caterer. This is the same thing you meant to run. Caterer, forget this. Forget that coverage. Caterer and swore he would never forget hearing, but never forget forgotten. Caterer and thank, caterer and thank. Good customer. Doing good, good booster, and good to teeter, and teeter, and miss, and good booster. Alright, we can get this, we can't wear it, we can get this, can't wear it. We can get this, we can wear it, and it's slightly better.
cedar room, make firewire for brisk room. You bring thingies, cedar room meat. Got your whiskers. You brought all thingies, cedar room, make firewire now. Make good firewire for good boost room. Cedar room, make. Start making fire water now. Good fire water, take time. More time, more good. we we'll come back later. Well, we got a weapon coffin. This gives us a weapon that is. You came. Which is an upgrade. Ooh, a blue. Blue item. We're getting blue stuffs. Teeterun appears to finish his gift for Booster Room. Teeterun make firewater. Good, good firewater. You take to Booster Room. Good firewater for good Booster Room. You drink now, something, something. Hopes Booster Room happy. Gives him thankies. Many, many thankies, you tell Booster Room. Make big shop someday. Biggest shop in Eorzea. Make many, many sparklies. All thankies to good Booster Room. It's far. Tranquil is actually cheaper. No, it's the same. Hard. Time or pay? Take more. But 479 is not bad, right? The cap was at 300,000 anyway, so I'm sure in the near future it'll be like completely pointless money will be no issue. Not going to worry about what can we consider. For seeing Teeterin's belongings to him. What's this for me? He turned firewater. So he remembers my fondness for the drink, does he? Why that old he, I, oh bloody hells. Who's cutting onions back there? He must be playing. He says to shelve it for a year, does he? Ah, oh, that sounds about right. I hate to have to wait, but I reckon it'll be worth it. This stuff has an aroma and body unlike any other drink. It's going to be a long, long year. What say you come back then, friend? We'll see if we can't make it through this bottle together. We got fingers we can't wear, bracers we can't wear, these ones we can't wear. Whoa! 
horribly. If Buskarun had his druthers, he'd have an adventurer with whom to share talk of Sylphs. There was word while you were away. Sylphs were seen in the wood, but near no lands of their own. And now this was a place near to here. A place we've never known a self to come. Something must have been given them cause to adventure this far. More than like the missing self elders among them. Here I've marked the track where they've been they were sighted on the map. Go see if anything to be seen. to be found in the wood. What did you come to? Garleans? In this part of the twelve choice? Hmm. First silks and now Garleans. They're all in the same place. It can't be a coincidence. Might the Garleans be following the silks? Tracking them or giving chase mayhap? But no, not this far into the forest. The whalers' spires are everywhere. Imperials could never have spoke stolen past them all. 
how the bloody elves could they, unless, unless someone guided them through, someone who knew where the spires stand, and when the whalers watch, a Gradenian crater. is more work for a willing adventure. I'm glad you've come, friend. There's something I want to talk to you about. You know I said I thought we might have a traitor in our midst. Someone as was aiding the Garleans? Well, I'm thinking I may have identified our suspect. There's a regular of mine who used to dine on thin soup and sip his pint on account of not being able to afford another. But of late, he's taken to ordering my best wines and my finest cuts of meats he can lay my hands on. I can lay my hands on. Were he a merchant, I'd probably think of him nothing, but this lad's a wood whaler. And wood whalers don't earn that kind of coin. By chance, I was musing on where the money was coming from when you first told me about the Garleans in the forest, and I couldn't help putting two and two together. Suffice to say, if a whaler is working in the Empire, none of us is safe. I'm talk the lad I'm talking about goes by the name of Laurentius. Last I heard, he was in the South Stroud. Find him, if he's up to no good, put an end to it, and him, if it comes to that. Find this guy, Laurentius. Yeah, he's right here. I'm so close. Disorderly adventurer. An adventurer, eh? Well met. Hang up your coat and wet your whistle. We'll keep a watch for any of these things. He's right there. Can you not see I'm on patrol? Be gone. If you have business with the whalers, take it to the barracks. Hmm. He's running away. Get him! Not long now. Hmm. I think patrol routes and rations would fetch such a price. No more than I deserve, though. It is little wonder the Empire has risen to such heights. If only the whalers had paid men their worth. You! Hi! Uh, what did you... How long have you... Help! 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 Please come quick, my friends. It is I, Laurentius. I'm under attack. Get him, Chocobo. Save my boat. How did you... you just... I know nothing. I was on patrol. He just appeared. I thought you were working with the Garleans. For the Garleans. <coughs> Sinking. Dropping me down to 27. How long you want to keep this up? Is it. What is it you imagine I've done? Enough, enough, I say. 
It, it's over then. I, I sold Noxum rations to the Empire. It was I. I meant no harm. I only wanted the coin. The whalers are strong. Good. Good. Strong. I was proud to join their ranks. And proud. But they did not provide their peace. They preach justice, honor, duty. But in the end, it is those with money who do as they will. Who live as they will. So I sought an opportunity to change my fortunes and took it. All I've done, I've given, I've done for money. I endangered myself, my home, everything, and everyone I love. Why, my actions have put your life in danger too. Though you do not yet realize how much. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Did you imagine that you had me cornered? It was not I who was cornered. Our lanes have brought the ah ra bastard. Permit me a question, if you will. Are all adventurers so deluded as to believe they can challenge the power of Barnaby? You would need a veritable mountain of guilt to find such an endeavor. Such is the cost of fighting great power. Or of making it. Or of remaking it, as we will as we regain here. So that's the way of it. Swap your hard bunk at the barracks for a feather bed and garland mall, did you? You there, Ara? You stand here at Old Husk's Wish? No? Then you don't stand alone. Hey, we have teammates. We don't have to do this all ourselves.
impossible. How did you best the Empire's finest? Any bandits and poachers at your side? They are your sworn enemies. Why do they fight with you and not against you? But, ah, uh, but I know the answer only too well. Buskaroo. This is his doing. His words are want to inspire men to act. Better men than I. Gosh, what have I become? What have I done? I, I am sorry. No more will I pursue this folly. No more lies, no more bribes. I will go to the Order of the Twin Adder and confess my crimes. There's something I would like to tell Buskaroo. Tell him Laurentius the Fool says, Thank you. I fell as though a fit. I feel as though a veil has been lifted from before my eyes. Just confessed to his crimes. I just had word with, from the twin adder. Seems he marched straight into the nest and gave himself up. The lads had quite a life, you know. His mother was killed by a brigand when he was only small. As a young man, he joined the whalers, hoping to spare his fellow Verdanians the misery that he'd known growing up. Trouble is, protecting Verdania is too big of a job for one man, and he came to believe that he couldn't make a difference, that it was hopeless. Here are a few things. There are a few things more dangerous than despair, desperation. When a man lost in the dark is easily drawn to the rumor of coin. I reckon he thought that if he couldn't change the lot of his fellow man, he might as well change his own. The thing is, he was making a difference, just not on his own. Somehow, he failed to grasp one simple truth. Truth. But those things we cannot do alone, we must do together. Eh? He asked you to thank me, did he? Then there's good in him yet. I just get hope them at the adder's nest are able to see it. What, he, what he's done ain't easy to forgive, but I'd like to think he's been afforded a chance to make amends. But let us leave fates to the twelve. I have other news for you, Mayra. The Sylph Elder has been found. Buskaroo has reliable information regarding the whereabouts of the Sylph Elder into the beast's maw. That this is a dungeon. It's taken us a fair old while. But we finally got our hands on some reliable information concerning the whereabouts of our missing green friend. Ahem, <laughs> his name is Frixio. He's one of the eldest amongst the sylphs of Little Salt. Long as he represented this kind of dialogue with the Greenians. Yes, he's like a bridge between us and them. A small leafy green bridge that we can't find at the moment. We can't find at the moment. And bridges are no use if you don't know where they are. That's why it's important that we find it. There's an abandoned dungeon called the Thousand Maws of Toto Rack here in the South Shrine. It was by the entrance to the place that Frixio has seen. And not long ago either. If you hurry, I reckon you'll find it. Walking ones, please help this one. This one needs help. He needs help to help Alder One. Poor Frixio. Poor, poor Frixio. Whoa, 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 hold your chocobos. Take a deep breath and tell us what's wrong, nice and slow. Elder One went to Toto Rack 
and has not returned. This one is worried. So very worried. And you're right to be. The place fair crawls with nasties waiting to make a meal of anyone daft enough to wander in. What in the seven L's was he thinking entering the bloody death trap? Elder one had no choice. Imperial ones were chasing Elder one. Please, walking one we must help Elder one. Help Elder one now. Hard. The fates conspire against us. Forgive my pragmatism, but Frixio is our best hope of reaching an accord with the Sylphs. Were we to lose him, all our efforts thus far will have been for, no for naught. I will tend to her wounds. Idea. He'd uh, make haste to the outer's nest and request assistance. Understood. Mangler, go to Thousand Moths, Todorak, see that Fritzio comes to no harm. Peace between man and self rests upon your success. Seeds here. The dungeon known as the Thousand Laws of Todorak has been placed under the control of what? The Sylph Elders inside? Well, and you are sure of this? How in the seven else did he manage to sneak by? God strike me down for a fur blind fool. <coughs> we must find the Sylph Elder before he falls prey to the fiends within. Entrance to Todorak is ordinarily restricted. But these are exceptional circumstances. Pray, assemble a rescue party, and enter as soon as you're ready. Alright, we're getting a rescue party here. And apparently you have to do an NPC's one, so non-player characters first. Register for duty. Probably gonna knock me down a bit. Light party. Who's got the light? Can I bring my chocobo? No, no chocobos. Rack expedition. Dangerous fauna encountered by the three gate. Calling as permission parameters. Expect to encounter more in the press people.
Spear Rydell, Tempe Rack Expedition Note Number Two. Engaged in a sizable fiend, succeeded in exterminating with casualties mounting. Must consider turning back if situation warrants. Okay, let's It's dark. 
required. Level 30. Oh, I have to do a class quest probably. Well, that would be a hyper hard. So, dungeon seedling. What the heck is that? Seedling that grows. Crafting material. Get him, Marauder. It's on you, Marauder. I'm not touching you. Treasure, that's a distraction. I probably won't need to grab it. Just to distract the torturers and my monocle. Rest. So let me I, I take a rest here and then I'll attack. Eternal shade. Not my
Okay, Coral and Ninetales, another boss. Bring him on.
More treasure. All the good treasures after you do the fight. This guy just in there. See. Capel, Capel. Hey, a new weapon. This is not bad. Boss character, but there's a red circle on him. So, are we ready? No, let's go. That he speaks in his own well wrong. An intriguing power of the echo. I must needs choose my words with care. Mayhap I might if I deign to speak I in my guest room. Mayhap I might if I deign to speak in my we guest room. We meet at last. Tongue. We meet at last. We didn't even try I to am Lahabrea of the Asians, servant to the one true God. Yours is a most fantastical tale, truly absorbing. It is a tale to tell Eorzea's children before bedtime, and it will soon be dark, bringer of light. The Dark Minions. All that stands between this world and darkness is an irksome anomaly in the ether. The Echo. Yes, yours is a most fascinating tale. Alas, like all good tales, it must needs come to an end. But fear not. Hear, feel the presence of evil. For the end of your tale is but the beginning of another. The tale of the crystal's demise.
in this fight, in this dungeon. That one was not hard at all. Effort was way harder. Which was not very hard either. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's the Elder. He rescued himself. <sighs> Finally, fresh air. Not so fresh, but better than ever. Better than before. Ah, sinister one is gone. This one can leave this awful place. Hmm? See it logging one vanquish the many legged one? This one is grateful to walking one. This one is called Frixio, eldest of these ones of little solace. Having a flashback or a migraine. Or both new flashbacks give me migraines. That would be really bad. Alpha Squad reporting, sir. Nothing known late at Lark's call, sir. Understood. Return to Area 12. Darn it all. Where it was? Where is that accursed icon hold hiding? No sign of the our wise and friend. I'm afraid not, my lord. Shall I order that the search perimeter be expanded? Absolutely not. We were. We risk alerting the Gridanians to our presence. His Excellency bid us avoid unnecessary confrontation. Loath though I am to admit it, I have found no evidence to suggest that Rama will be gracing the mortal realm in the near future. 
I ask you, what good is a God who does not grant one's wishes? Were I a self, I should strongly consider finding myself another idol. Which reminds me, why do the sylphs be captured? A handful of them seem to be in reasonably good health when last I looked. Ah, uh, apologies, my lord. I fear that we may have been overzealous in our efforts to compel them to summon their icon. Oh, really, Centurion. Were you not aware that vegetables bruise easily? It is well that I did not entrust you with the important task of making my dinner. Well, I may have. It was a kindness. Better dead in truth than dead to one's own god. I suppose, if you believe in such things. Dawn is upon us. Make ready to withdraw. Hmm. Useless. We are so close to completion, I can fair taste it. But at this rate, no, I must be patient. Our efforts will bear through fruit in due time. What was it you always said? Ah, yes. Though it mean bringing down the very heavens, who shall challenge the limits of possibility if not we? In, not, in that alone you are right, Gal Garland. But your star is long fallen, while mine doth begin to rise. And it shall bring burn so bright, so bright that Lord Van Belsar, ultimate weapon, will seem a mere candle beside it. Ahahaha. Ah, ah, ah. The locking ones give for Noxia. This one is certain of it. This one fears that one other taken ones also suffered the same fate. This one is convinced. Walking ones have black hearts. Seek only to harm these ones. Walking ones are not to be trusted. Now, now, Naraxia, do not pass judgment too hastily. Not all walking ones are alike. Though there are evil ones among the walking ones, there are good ones also. Does walking one feel unwell? This one would know. What brings walking one to this place? Came to one's rescue at Euraxia's bidding. Then this one owes walking one a great debt of gratitude. Huh? Walking one has questions about Lord Rama. Then this one will provide answers. But first, let these ones quit this lightless place. This one will return to the little solace. When walking one is ready, please come and see this one. These ones may speak properly then. <coughs> then it is settled. Let this one accompany walking one outside. Tell me the Sylph Elder as well. Thank the gods for that. I don't rightly know what to make of the rest of your tale, but I'm full black Frixio didn't come to me. 
Ah, but there I go, tempting fate. Run over to Little Solace and secure us peace with the Sylphs before aught else befalls, eh? Rest assured, I'll send word to our friends of Charlayan and the Twin Adderbone. You've done Gridania a great service this day, lad, and earn yourself a place of honor here at the Brothers in so doing. Be sure and come by whenever you feel like a drop of Chichir and Firewater. Alright, we need to improve our robe. We can't wear those. Buscaron has something he wants delivered to the Sylphs. I can do that, and they're gonna give me stuff I can't wear, so I'll have to put the money. Say, friend, there's something I'd like to ask you. I see delivered to the Sylphs in a real songs. This is in the Rose Oil. It's a gift to celebrate the safe return of your elder tribe's elders. Elder. And a token of Virginia desire to unite. The wood is not what it once was. The calamity changed the elements of sweeping them. Until their strength is returned, we must lend them ours to keep the wood safe. But ours alone will not be enough. We must have the strength of the sylphs as well. Only by working together and fighting together will we survive there, and the twelve wood with us. The gift I ask you to bear is a symbol of the hope that both Gridanian and Sylph alike will live to see the light beyond the darkness. And you play cards too, I'm not going to challenge, I'm just going to see how much. 25, okay, so he's worth 20 back to see Not with a 5 or a 10. Okay. Way over there. Simple gift. That reminds me of a song. Where am I? I'm over here. I'm going to go up to the east shroud. Simple gift. I think we'll walk. Interesting, you have a tunnel. Okay, I'll check the map. Yep, just go in right here. Buscaro? A gift for these ones? 
Such a lovely scent. This one has never smelled anything like this before. Walking on Buscaron and adventuring one are very kind. I know that this one is deeply grateful. Many walking ones are scary. Many walking ones utter many lies and much deception. But this one is rude. Let all of these ones be friends forever. Okay, these shoes don't help. Look like Wants me to discuss peace with Frixio. I right? see crystal. Usually means like the end. You did it, you made it. This one has been expecting the walking one. This one fetches elder one. This one is pleased to see walking one again. Welcome to the home of these ones. Ah, there you are, Mangler. We have just been hearing tell of your deeds of daring deed. Well done. Ah, the walking ones who aid in your axiom. This one is grateful. A pleasure to men of service. If you do not mind my asking, how did your misadventure come about? This one does not mind. The misadventures as walking one calls them, of this one began when imperial ones entered the wood. Fearing trouble, these ones decided to watch imperial ones closely. But these ones watched too closely and imperial ones noticed and tried to catch these ones. Having nowhere else to hide, this one fled into Totorak. The word that this one had not, in Totorak, a sinister one robed in black tried to feed this one to a many-legged one. The sinister one robed in black? Why do I have a feeling you'll be more worried about that than I am? Elder Frixio, we come to you as em emissaries of the nation of Gredania. This missive bears the words of the Elder Sitsu. This one sees. So walking ones of Gredania are fearful of Lord Brahma. Plainly put, yes, your people summoned the Lord of London but once, yet that single occurrence occasioned great alarm. But it's not as if the Gredanians dislike you or anything. Actually, it's just the opposite. They think of you as friends, and they don't want anything to get in the way of that. That's why the Elder Seeds here wrote to you. Hmm. This one well knows and respects Horn One, Kami, and Senna. Be assured, like walking ones of Virginia, these ones have no desire for comfort. These ones were resorted to summoning Lord Rama to protect the wood when from Imperial ones. This one counseled against doing so, but was not heeded. Against the, this one's wishes, Lord Rama was summoned, and all these ones who took part became touched ones. These ones were so desperately to turn touched ones into normal ones, but did not know how, and still did not know. Oh. Touched ones, meanwhile, wanted to turn the, these ones into touched ones and did not know how. And did know how, so this one fled to the little solace with all those ones who did not wish to be bound to Lord Brahma. But walking ones of Virginia need not fear touched ones or Lord Brahma. Unlike other primal ones, Lord Rama is not callous or cruel. So long as walking ones do not trespass on these ones' ancestral homeland where touched ones reside, walking ones will not suffer thunderous judgment. But this one has spoken enough of touched ones. This one would speak instead of these ones. 
as this one said, these ones desire peace with walking ones of redeeming. And so these ones ask for a chance to see things right. By way of an addendum, mortal who, mortals who are tempered come to take on the qualities embodied by the primal in question. In the case of the sylphs, Brahma's influence has made them fiercely protective of the homeland. That explains why they're so hostile toward trespassers. But what about the abductions? The fine question is that the abductions are, I believe, an expression of the tempered self's desire for recon reconciliation, another quality traditionally associated with Brahma. In the crudest manner imaginable, they seek to bring their fellows back into the void. A timely reminder that the challenges is posed by each primal are unique. Elder Frixio, we thank you for making your will known to us. The people of Gridania will rest easier in the knowledge that they and the Sylphs are united in their desire for peace and their desire for peace. Wishing to cooperate, this one's one has written down the feelings of these ones. Please see that these feelings are conveyed to Horned One and the Sea. And with that, I believe we can lay the matter of Rama to rest. That self elder is very responsible, I must say. You could learn a lot from him. Hmm? Is that a jive? If so, I feel it only fair to observe that one of us wouldn't recognize reason if it punched around the nose. Did I say fair? I meant reasonable. Anyway. We're going to head back to Walking Sands and tell Minfilia all about it. Fear not, we will be sure to mention the instrumental part you played in all of this. And while we see to that, we should appreciate it if you would deliver Frixio's missive to the adder's nest. Elder Frixio, we humbly thank you for your time, it's been an honor. The honor is this place. Together, let the walking ones of Gradenia and these ones find a way to live in peace. Please wait, walking one neighbor. This one has yet to give walking one a token of one, this one's appreciation. When these ones summoned Lord Rama, these ones were gifted this crystal. This one would now be still the crystal upon walking one as a symbol of these ones' trust. Crystal number two, or three, or something. Through the game. <sighs> this one was not mistaken about walking one. He already has two crystals. He's the collector. Walking one is destined to walk a fate far crueler than this one can imagine. Oh. A brilliant light from within walking one enveloped the crystal, this one saw. Mark this one well. The crystal will one day be of use to walking one. Walking one must keep the crystal safe at all times. Before walking one returns to greeting you, this one would ask walking one to watch touched ones. So long as touched ones are not troubled, touched ones will not make trouble. If walking one witnesses touch ones making no trouble, may have walking one can testify to walking ones of Gradenia that these ones mean no harm. These ones' homeland is fraught with danger. This one marks down safe places to look out for touch ones. East of Solace. Mm -hmm. 
Go to a tempered silk. Okay, I need to find a tempered silk. done that. Did that three times. Maybe after you find them, then you come back to them. There are tempered sylphs in the distance. We do not sense that they pose a danger if left below. I also wanted to see if there is a quest for threat of superiority. Is this which quest is this? Is this red? Yeah, this is a thermoturge one. I don't want to do a thermoturge one. I want to do the. Uh, Finish this one first. Maybe I have to go to. I, I know what I'll do. I'll go to back home and I'll go to the 
the white mage area and see if there's a quest there. Because I want to be able to do cure too. This is going to be a long uphill struggle if I start to do cure one of them. not his study in the, of the elements. I confess, I have no lesson for you to learn this day. Instead, I would ask that you aid me in the education of another. Yes, I speak of Sylvia. After no small amount of prompting bordering on coercion, that child has finally promised to attempt to embrace the forces of nature. But I am afraid the matter is no, not so easily resolved. Sylvia has never attempted to learn basic offensive spells that you and other conjurers mastered before men first venturing into the wild. As such, he's ill equipped to undertake the trials which furnish you and your peers with the understanding of the elements. Put simply, she is no match for the tainted spirits of nature. But if the more capable conjurer were to accompany her and purify the corruption in her stead, it may yet serve to impress upon her the power and force of her work. I bid you to take her on a pilgrimage around the Twelve's Wood and give her the opportunity to witness these confrontations with me. Earth, wind, water. Water. She must know all them. Know her, show her the majesty and primal ferocity of nature. As it was with you, let Earth be your first lesson. Sophia awaits you at Pet Crow Meadows. Pet Branch Meadows. Pray forgive my presumption, but I thought it best to send her on again while her conviction remains strong. Once you have located a patch of corrupted soil at that branch, draw forth a tainted spray and let her witness the struggle that ensues. May the elementals aid you in this way. Alright. That branch meadow is 158. Sounds good. Scared. I was just a little startled, that's all. It was as if a massive solid wrath had erupted from the ground. I never felt anything like I need a new one. 
we have to head to the Brannock Bannock next. Let's get this over. Oh, that's walking this place. Blew straight through me. I felt both gentle and sharp at the same time. I, I can't explain it. That is something you can conjure? Let's be on our way. The last one is Lily Stone. Way over there. South. Straight south, and then we can track up. Hopefully she is getting it. Wow, I zero damage. Lake is so beautiful. I never noticed how clearly the sky is reflecting the surface. I never noticed. Let's head back. I'm ready to speak to the guild master for him. No.
Sylphy, Sylph. I mean, it's Sylphy. Which is not a Sylph. I like to see it in selfies. How fair are you in your encounter with the elements? Sophie, did you sense that Mangler sensed the sources of corruption? It's hard to explain, but it was like hearing voices crying out in joy. And I felt their happiness wash over me. The world seemed sharper, more active, alive. It was almost as if nature were speaking to me. But why, Brother Isumi? Why did my mother teach me to avoid this side of conjuring? What was she so afraid of? There are certain truths that hide behind the mask of our words, and there is much that your mother didn't tell you. But you need not seek all the answers at once, I think. Even now, your mind wanders amid a sudden inundation of awareness. The first time we contact with nature can be a wonderful but disorienting experience. I suggest you allow yourself some time to adjust to this new perspective. Yes, Guildmaster. You have my gratitude, Mangler. Thanks to you, Sylphia has taken a most important step. You heard her mention voices crying out in joy, did you not? It appears the mother's gift has been passed on to the daughter. Such sensitivity is not something one can achieve through many meditation and training, but a blessing that only a few fortunate chosen are Receive. And, as you have no doubt surmised, Sylphie's mother was one such person. The misunderstanding of that blessing, however, was what led her down such a tragic path. We cannot allow Sylphie's astonishing talents to consume her in the same way. But we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. The girl has barely awoken to her potential, and for the, that potential to be fully realized, your support is yet needed. I suspect she failed to mention that the promise of your involvement in her lessons was the reason to change her was for her change of fate. Ah, you underestimate the impression that your quiet determination has made on young Sophie. If modesty prevents you from acknowledging your own good deed, consider this task as part of your training. The conjurers are healers of wounds. Be they physical or otherwise, walk with her on her journey in life, and together explore the myriad mysteries of nature. Alright, a bunch of stuff I can't use, oh, of course. And according to this, nothing's in here. Alright, so what's this? Is this another level? 25. Okay, so maybe every 5 you talk to this guy. And maybe at 30 you'll be able to cast cure too. Brother Isumiyan requires your assistance in a manner concerning the young conjurer school. Nothing that helps me out with one Welcome, Mangler. The tales of your deeds reach me even here in the cloistered heart of Stillglade still Fate. Glad I am that you've come, for I would ask your assistance in the matter of some delicacy. It concerns, yes, young Sophie once again. As you can no doubt imagine, the recent revelations concerning the mother have sorely troubled the poor child. And here Sophie needed some time alone to sort through the whirlwind of emotions which now beset her. She has, in short, fled from the guilt. Fortunately, a party of conjurers who were dispatched in the south, to the South Shroud to investigate another instance of corruption sent word that they have spotted a wayward something, our wayward something. Considering the importance of their mission, I would not seek to distract the conjurers from their task. Thus, I turn to you to escort Sophie back here to begin. You are, I believe, one of the few people to whom she will listen. Ray traveled to Buscaran's brother since he with Wolf. 
woefully. She was the conjurer who changed chance upon Sophie and will be able to tell you more of how the young lady felt. people with hats. We meet again, Mangler. I assume Brother Isumi warned you of the corruption of my companions and I have been tasked with purifying here in the South Shore. The source of this extensive light is found to the southeast. The shrill, discordant voices of the elementals shriek their dismay in the vicinity of the withered trio. I suggest you give the whole area a wide berth. Considering the potential dangers, you might imagine how alarmed I was to have discovered young Sophie wandering about this part of the world. It seems that her mother, a woman who healed the conjury, but remained untrained by the guild, called this region her home. Sophie herself had her head buried in some manner of tome, but if she is as sensitive to the elemental's murmurings as I am led to believe, and the din within her mind must be driving her to distract her. Pray speak with the child and see that she's well. I would do so myself, I would do so myself if our current duty were not so pressing. We will, in fact, be setting out at the any moment. I may go here, but I'll hear it. So good. Mangler? Ah, I should have known that Wolfie would wreck tattle on me, and Brother Isumi sent you to take me back, didn't he? This is where my mother used to live, you know. Right up till she passed on, folk were grateful for the healing she offered. And this is the journal she used to keep. There's an entry of, that explains how nature becomes furious when conjurers use their art. How there are always more people wounded in battles when mortals abuse the power that is not theirs to take. My mother refused to draw on nature because she was scared of making it angry. She wouldn't lie about things such, about such things. And I want to do what she would have done. I'm going to stop using Conjury altogether. Ugh, I've never heard the voices this mad before. I bet it's because Wolfie and the others are overusing their art. We have to go and stop them. Thank you. 
duty calls. Not gonna be down to 29. actually helped us. There's nothing scary about it at all. I might still wonder if what was really safe for conjurers to borrow that power if I hadn't seen the way we wield it. Nothing could seem more natural. I think it's time I went back to you. There are a few things I need to collect first, so go on ahead and go. And also you, Sophie. Brother Isumi, I'm sorry I ran away like that. I understand, child. Did you find the answers you sought? Yes, thanks to Mangler. He showed me that nature was nothing to be afraid of. I think I know why my mother refused to fall upon its power. She believed the act caused suffering to nature itself. I see. So it was her very love for nature that prevented her from drawing on its strength. Tell me, Sophie, has the fog of indecision now lifted from your mind? It has, killed Master. I don't understand now why my mother chose to pass you here. <clears throat> Full glad am I to hear that. For I must ask of you one more question. Yes, Brother Isumi? When you first witnessed Mangler Clans a corrupted element, you question, mentioned hearing voices. How exactly did they sound? The voices? Well, they sounded joyful, like a crowd laying out a sudden cheer. I really heard them, I swear. I'm sure you did, Sylphie. This is a gift. Conjurers may sense the power of nature and borrow from its strength, but not often hear its whispers. What you described are the voices of the elementals. You may very well possess the talent to become a hearer. A hearer? Of course, much relies on your studies of conjury, when you have a natural aptitude, but have thus far lacked commitment. You must not neglect your training something. Putting aside such matters for a moment, I'm curious to hear about the disturbance you observed in the South Shroud, England. I assume from the reports that I received 
that it was of a different magnitude of those which we have previously encountered, am I correct? Hmm, this bodes ill. The creatures known as mud pies are not native to the flow food. I would I wonder what relation this may have to the seemingly ever increasing frequency of these disturbances. Something beyond the damage wrought by the calamity afflicts the twelve sword. I shall commune with the elementals and seek to identify the threat. Nagler, Sophie, I may need you both before and long. Until then, give yourselves over to the study of our art. Never shall the earth meet your footfall and the wind guide your path. Alright, we don't need that. 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 Alright, is it level 31? 30 is the one that is right next year too. Yep, there's 30. Nature's embrace. Rather ease to me. Would you would have you investigate the creeping corruption that threatens the world? Here too, there we go. That was the spell I needed. Oh wow. Yeah, we got some stuff we can use. So, yeah. Ah, Mingler, your presence here is most welcome. I have another task to which your maturing skills are well suited. It's in Mikosi. Expansive wounds that lose corruption have formed throughout the forest. After examining traces of a, a sizable disturbance you previously cleansed, I can only conclude that this phenomenon is the work of a malign nature. It must be, it must be found swiftly, lest the corruption spread, and I would have your assist in the investigate. Guildmaster, you must let for help. Let me help. You must let me help. Oh, Sophie. Sophie? Since I got back from the South Shrug, I've spent all my time studying the forces of nature. I even sat through one of Mirror Milanel's lectures. The Twelve's Wood is crying out in pain. My skills are still a bit lacking in some areas, but I want to do what I can for the forest. Lacking? Sophie, you have yet to master a single offensive spell. Without the means to defend yourself, it would be far too dangerous to send you off into the forest alone. So I'm here to, s I'm to stay here then. Not necessarily. Mangler, with your consent, I would have Sophie accompany you once more. I do not propose this arrangement solely for the first safety of mine. Given the nature of the investigation, it is like that Sylvie's innate talent for hearing will prove to, as useful for, to you as your conjuring well to her. There is much you might accomplish together. Sylvie, you are not to approach any sources of corruption without me right at your side. I make myself clear. And should you chance to encounter the origin of these disturbances, do not initiate the confrontation. Too often you allow your curiosity to overwhelm your good sense. Now go and maybe the elementals watch over there. Uh, yes, go, Mister. Something tells me we should start a quarry mill in the South Shrap. Meet me there as soon as you can. We're in a hurry. The corruption is spreading. We were just there. Five seconds. Transportation has gone up. Work of the imagination. 
How do you make money in this game? I know quests give you money, but at some point I'll run out of quests. There's another one, and well, it falls to me even more fervently than the last. Thanks to the east. Yep, the east. Far from, not far from here, somewhere to the southeast, I think. Shall we at least have a closer look? No, absolutely not. Okay, I think I have another. Can that hold? On the inside of the stick? On the bottom of the stick? Nature's Embrace, level 34. This is the slightly harder battle. Hardest battle we've fought in a while. 
I don't think you need to hear, be able to hear voices in the forest to know that, do you, anyway? Corruption is definitely coming from somewhere around here. Hmm, that's odd. As soon as we arrived, this sense of wrongness, I suddenly felt less, well, it just felt less. Almost as if it's holding its breath or hiding. Did you see that? Just in that one spot there, the air seems wrong. If I picked the right thing to keep attacking, didn't get distracted. Once again, don't get distracted. Oh no, did she just fall over? Oh, we lost her. <laughs> Isn't it amazing, Mangler? Did the breeze always feel this good? Gonna be my enemy soon? Was the ground always this warm? I'm glad I'm so glad I finally understand. I just wish I could tell my mother how incredible nature feels. This is why we go outside all the time. Oh, you're injured. Here. Healing doesn't green me anymore. Not since I learned how to borrow from nature. I have you to thank for that, Raymond. But to turn to the guild, we have to explain everything to Brother Easter. Cure two. Will they let me use cure two if I have to go down a level to the level thirty? We'll find out. I guess I'm mean, yes. So that's a spring. If I were a pity pity car, I would 
probably want to change the name. Welcome back, Mangler, Sophie. Our mission was a success, Gale Master. Right, I take it to you conspired to defy my orders. Well, the force was suffering. You couldn't just walk away. It's not Mangler's fault, it's mine. It was all my idea. I take full responsibility. Calm yourself, child. You did nothing I did not foresee. I am of no mind to lecture you. Indeed, Gridania is indebted to you for your heroic deeds. The corruption born of a common had taken root in the calamity weakened soil. There is no telling how much further it might have spread if you did, had not defeated the creature. And if I'm not mistaken, Sylphie, you succeeded in drawing upon the energies of nature during the battle. How did you... Yes, yes, I did. I am not sure, really sure how it happened. I remember thinking how badly I wanted to help Mangler, and then I suddenly felt the power surging through me. It is as it should be. One does not simply choose to borrow from nature's strength. The mind may demand only that which the heart permits. If in, in your desperation, desperation to help your friend, you open your heart to nature and nature responds to your need. Uh, but we must not forget your part in this, Mangler. It is clear to me that your journey with Sophie has brought you still closer to the pinnacle of our art. I believe you are ready for the last of my teachings. Thus, it is with great pleasure that I pass on another of our guild's magics. A more potent form of the cure spell is now yours to command. I have no doubt that it will serve you well in your continuing endeavors. Wheresoever you go, nature will grow with you, my friend. Ever shall the earth meet your footfall, and the wind guide your path. Success. Okay, what do we want? We want the body, the legs. I said the legs. Right here. And we want the legs. The two young Pajuls, sister Raya Osina and brother Olun Sena, make for ever shade as we speak, where they will perform a ritual of great import, verily such import that it should it would be no overstatement to say that the very fate of Gridania 
in the mountains. As you well know, we dwell in the forest by the good graces of the Elementals, eternal guardians of the Twelve Stone, and most of all the great, the great one who dwells within the garden. With our ceaseless warning and ill treatment of the trees that shelter us, have aroused the great one's ire, and it is only by quieting the ritual of which I spoke that he may, he may be placated. Thus did the two seed seers set out for cover shade, with Mary a guard to accompany them. Therein lies the rub in the nature of the favor I ask of him. By no means would I question the powers of the seed seers, but with the great one's anger mounting, the twelve's wood becomes a threatening domain for even the most puissant of conjurers. Pray hasten to Evershade and see that no harm befalls the time. Still knocks me down, but I'm still way stronger than my enemies, probably. Curses. How can we hope to make it a guardian tree with these ghastly creatures bringing forth like bursting forth like rampant weeds? If I had known that we were in what we were in for, I'd have brought along a wood whaler or two. In fact, I dare say we should return and do exactly that. Oh, do not be such a coward, sister. We are seed seers. These overgrown vermin are no match for us. Bold words, brother. But were they true words, we would have dispatched enemies and arrived safely at our destination in Belzebub. Hmm, a conjurer, are you? Brother Isumi, ever the warrior. For once, however, his solicitude is most welcome. Might you help us dispose of these fell creatures? Have you no pride, sister? A seed seer does not pay the aid, aid, aid of some common adventure. Enough, brother. We have a duty to perform, a duty that takes precedence over your silly notions of pride. Now, enough talk. Let us see to these pests. You have the same hair as me. Same hair color. <laughs>
beauty queen. That was a little weird. And we got knocked back a few times. It's crystal number four. No, this is a different kind of quest. That crystal. Do my eyes deceive me or does adventurer inherit the legacy of Otto Lapiant? It was none other than Otto himself who last performed the quietude. No, I do not believe this adventurer's arrival is a mere coincidence. Bearer of the Soul Crystal, inheritor of arcane knowledge, long since forbidden, is to those not of our kind. I know not why it is you who chose, but I believe our great forefather has led you to us today. <clears throat> Ancient tradition dictates that the quieting be performed by three pageants. Ah, I misspeak. The ritual is to be performed by three white mages. If Master Aetoa truly has chosen this adventure as his successor. You, you speak mad madness, sister. Surely you have not forgotten that agile tradition strictly forbids sharing the teachings with those not of our kind. The power of white magic is far too great to risk it falling into the wrong hands. So you would uphold tradition merely for tradition's sake, even at the risk of incurring the Great Worm's wrath and bringing a disaster upon our forest home? Have you so little faith in your own ability, sister? We are at seed seers, more than capable of slaying any beasts in our way and carrying out the ritual on our own. This petty bickering is getting us nowhere. Adventure, I am sorry to trouble you with our silly sibling squabbles. If you have the time, I would speak with you further, but not here. Come to Camp Tranquil, and come quickly, time is of the essence. Thank you for coming, adventurer. Forgive my brother's rudeness. He could not help that he was born with a head of solid stone. Anyways, not in your room. Anyways, I do not believe that 
we have improperly used. I am Riot Lucina, a Padua. As you can see, the sister of the Elder Tsitsu. You are Mangler, yes? Brother Isumi has spoken of you, and most highly of that. As you have no doubt heard, my brother, a rune, and I were en route to the Guardian Tree. There, the Great Woman, by whose graces we dwell here, resides. The gentlest of guardians, when at peace, a destructive force that knows no bounds when angered, and the Great One goes, as the Great One goes, so goes our fate. The creatures you helped us dispatch, doubtless they too were roused to hostility by the Great One in his anger. You need only look around you to see. The forest grows more and more threatening with each passing hour. So it is with that we traveled here to quell the Great One's fury to perform the fire. In days of old, the ritual was, without fail, performed by three white mages. With our elder sister occupied with many of her duties, my brother and I thought to attempt it on our own. A room was quite confident, but I had many doubts. It was then that you arrived, and shortly thereafter became one of the chosen few to be gifted with the white mages' soul crystal. It is no small honor that gem marks you as an inheritor of the magic of our ancestors. My brother's pride may blind him, but the signs are clear as day to me. You are not a jolly, but Atoa can't meant for you to be here one day, today, to perform the ritual movements. Atawa Kant is known to all as one of the greatest mages in our history, but even more so, he was known for being something of an eccentric, in defiance of tradition. He bid farewell to his forest home, wandering the realm and healing the wounds of the land and its people wheresoever he went. A most admirable cause, yes, but alas, Atoa was never to return. He perished in a far off land and having taken no apprentices, his legendary powers were lost to us for eternity, or so I believe, until I met you. And yet, for all his stubbornness, there is some truth to my brother's words. Ancient laws forbid us from sharing the teachings of white magic outside of our own time. There are reasons for this, but I will share with you when the time is right. There are many who would not approve of this arrangement. Still, I am convinced that it is Atoa's will that we bring you into the fold. And so I welcome you, Mangler of the Light. I can feel a Great One's fury welling up even now. Time is short, and yet, while you may have been chosen by Atoa, I fear your journey as a White Mage has just begun. Return to me when you have further honed your skills, and we shall proceed with your training. Presence of mind spell is, makes it go faster. So it's for 15 seconds of really good fight, you pass that right before. Armory unlocked. What's armory? White mage unlocked. Hey, we could be in a white mage. Alright, look at that. No more conjurer. Let's go to white mage. Available at 35. I am 35. Should we start our white mage? What? Jobs. You obtained a soul crystal. Soul crystals are required to change from your current class to a more specialized job. Each job has its own crystal and arms. It can be equipped via the armory chest. Using a job you will have limited access to actions from other classes. You will, however, have access to new specified job-specific actions. Job levels coincide with those in the base class. When the job level rises, so too does the level of the base class and vice versa. Jobs that do not have a base class, however, will start from the level required for unlocking, and their level can be raised independently of other classes and jobs. Take another dimension here. Armory chest. Oops. Is it armory chest? No. It's not. It's not there. 
Soul crystals. Soul of the monkey. And if I put that soul crystal on, now transfer. Give me all my conjurer stuff to my way. Alright, now everything that was Conjure is now White Mage. I'm a White Mage already? Well that was easy. Ha! We did it! We got White Mage. And I can upgrade my pants. No more pantyhose. Alright. We talk to them. What is my next quest? Only you can pervert, prevent forest fire. Ha! Regenerate! That would be a nice one. Alright, let's work on it and regenerate. Sorry, main quest, but we gotta get these cool spells done now that I'm a white mage. Ah, Mangler, looking ever more the white mage, I see. And yet, I fear you are ready to perform the quieting as a chocobo chick is to carry a wood waller clad in full plate. But, take heart, for we all must begin somewhere. Today, I will teach you the art of communing with the elementals. This is, by any measure, the very foundation of your art. That the means by which we preserve harmony between the forest and our people. Not far from Sorrel Haven, you'll find a tree, a mere sapling in the shadow of the guardian tree, but one that has likewise been consumed by anger and fear. I would ask you to placate this tree. The process is quite simple. Stand before the tree and raise your hands. Commune with the elementals that reside within and attune yourself to them until the feelings are in absolute harmony. Be forewarned, however, an angry elemental can be discovered as my dear brother. Do not be surprised if you find your arms to be rebuffed and foul creatures sent to drive you from the forest. No matter what happens, you must remain calm. Dispatch a creature, settle your heart, and speak to the tree once more. If your heart is true, your voice will reach the elemental realm. Remember this, Mingle, under no circumstances must you allow your anger and fear to overcome you. As practitioners of white magic, the magic of succor and solace, which emotions are anathema to our very existence. She's saying focus, okay. Alright, we gotta go here, which is way back at that branch. Go back, fall gourd float. New Virginia. Okay, let's go to New Virginia and go out that window. Yes, but I should probably talk to this chocobo guy real quick. In case I need to teleport here quickly or something. Oh, he's up there. Okay. So, I already Nope, I did not. Let's see if we have to read it. Alright, let's go back. Alright, let's look for... 
go to this gate down here. This gate may travel through the White Wolf Gate. It's for your own good. The fearsome beasts that lurk beyond would tear an unprepared adventure in the front line. We have papers? Let's see now. Everything appears to be in order. Go in safety in the future from our past. Only say the word. Okay, I can choose yellow, red, green. Alright, now I can go to this gate. And I leveled up. Go back. Let me throw. Excuse me. Yes. Only oh, yes. Hold fast now on the Okay. Now we're gonna do this quest. I may see it right there on the map. Santa Claus. 
Oh my gosh, it's Santa Claus. We found Santa Claus. Short time ago, I sensed the great anger abate. Abate. The forest is quieter, more welcoming now. I would. It would seem you have passed your first test, Mangler. Trees are the elementals. The elementals are the trees. The lush verdure of the wood is inseparable from the spirits that dwell within it. But you do not need to hear this from me. Doubtless you felt it yourself when you healed that tree. Above all else, the elementals prize harmony. When they sense a threat to harmony, they summon forth all the powers of their disposal to expulse it. For so long have they lived in peace with the elementals. Why now do they turn against us? I can offer no answers, only theories. But one thing is certain, we must quell the Great One's fury, and do it soon, lest Virginia bear the full brunt of the forest threat. The sooner the forest wounds and restore harmony, that is our duty as majors of the light. And it is a responsibility that transcends race or nation. I sensed your success in soothing the Elm tree, and am more certain of this than ever. Sadly, many cannot see past established practice and tradition, my dear brother and I. One would hope for a bit more open mindedness given his youth, but alas, his pride is a pagel will not prove it. For my part, I am not entirely unsympathetic to his concerns. And yet, the task before us is too great. We must bring him around to see reason. But how? Forgive me, Mango. I would be alone in my thoughts for a while. I would, yeah. Worry not, I'll find a way to deal with him. Alright, we got regenerate. Okay, regenerate. Where should we put this one? Let's put this one above Medica. Where should we put it next to Medica? Let's put it in place of Medica because that's closer and I probably want to do that more often. Alright, what do we need for this next one? Oh, brother, where are you? Okay, we're not even level 40 yet. So that's it for that quest. Well done. Believe in yourself is where we were at the last time. This is the main quest. Now we got Cure 2 and Regenerate, and we're a White Mage. Cool is that. Private Mangler. How went the meeting with the Sylphs? Here's the letter. A missive from the Sylph Elder himself, if I may. So the Sylphs have no desire for conflict, nor do they intend to summon Rama. And so long as we leave the Tempered Ones be, we need not fear any aggression on their part. The Elder Seeds here will, will be overjoyed to hear that the Sylphs have welcomed their overtures, our overtures. And in the acknowledge that they bear us no ill will, we may channel our resources towards tackling the more conspicuous threats to our security. You have done our nation a great service, Private Mangler. It will not be forgotten. Commander Helio Helu appears to have more to say. Give me ten more Vesper Bay tickets. The Celtic folk have long been friends to Virginia. The mere thought of being at war with them came the Elder Seats here to no end. 
but owing to your efforts, she will be able to rescue rescues me. Being the benevolent soul that she is, my lady will surely try to find a way to reverse the tempering process. Once again, I thank you for the signs of the seventh dawn not offered to mediate between our peoples. Suspicion and doubt may well have led us into needless conflict. Pray pass on my regards for the name of the Good timing. Hello, hello, Mangler, can you hear me? It's I am Nymphilia. Nita and Papalima returned some little while ago, and they wasted no time in regaling me with the tale of their exploits. Thanks in large part to you, the name of one primal may be stuck, struck from our list of enemies, and the Gradanians may turn their attention to more pressing matters. Well done. Yet the end of one tale is but the start of another. Pray return to the walking sands at earliest convenience. I would apprise you of the present situation in person. Favorite adventure. Welcome back, Mabel. Lady Minfully awaits you within the solar. and try your leisure. I am given to understand that the matter of Rama has faithfully been resolved. Hmm, if your resolve bespeaks a permanence, we cannot rightly claim. Yet I am well satisfied that the Lord of Levin will not trouble us in, a, in the foreseeable future. Your satisfaction is assurance enough for me. 
How fair is the investigation? Well enough, fun grid is sparing no effect. Pumpkin had to say hi. Say hi, Pumpkin. No talking? He's camera shot. He was talking just a second ago. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. His tail straight up. That means they're happy. That means he's happy. Well enough, Spark Rate is spreading over. They are many and one, just as you suspected. Their purpose, however, eludes us still. I see. Ah, uh, I have been meaning to ask. But is Alice say well? I feel as if I have scarcely seen her in recent days. Oh, you haven't, nor have I, alas. I'll say has chosen to walk her own path, stubborn girl. But you may be assured that our destination remains the same. And on that note, I take my leave of you. I trust that Baldacion report will serve you well. I can... I take it we can proceed as discussed. Why do you ask? You scarce need my permission to act. It's good to see you again, Mangler. I have been looking forward to congratulating you on your triumph at the Twelveswood. Owing to our, your efforts, conflict has been averted. Truly, you have done the Scions proud. With that, you can strike Ramula from the list. So who's next? The Sahagin and Leviathan? The Lord of the Wall has not answered his minions call of late nor is he expected to do so in the near future. While the Sahagin remain as aggressive as ever, they lack the quantity of crystals required to call forth their god. As with the Sylphs, they can leave them, we can leave them to their own advice, devices, for a time at least. For a time bears repeating, we can ill afford to fall complacent. It is as Ishtala says, unless we know the minds of the beast tribes, we cannot predict with any certainty when next day Primal will return to plague the land. This being the case, we must proceed with as much haste as prudence allows. Any word on Titan? The Maelstrom keeps the kobolds under constant observation. We shall hear from then ere long, and you may depend upon it. Indeed, so then of all the known primals that have been active in recent times, we are left with... Redania. What, I mean, Garuda, who is the primal of the Ixal, who live near Redania. Yes, that's what I meant. So many moms to cover. What that who would that there were a more efficient way to conduct our surveys? Were he still with us, we should not long have wanted to, for a more practicable solution. She's not wrong there. <sighs> where in the world are you, Chief? But one sure step at a time. Henceforth, 
The order of the twin adder will handle all matters pertaining to the sylphs, under the sage guidance of the seat seers. I bid you all enjoy a moment's respite. You have earned it. Is there something else made by? Big party? A man named La Habria, sporting a red mask and robed in black. Twelve, preserve. Count, prior to the calamity, the Asians took great pride to remain hidden. Why would they choose to cast off their veil of secrecy? Gosh, this bodes ill. We must take advantage of the present role to in primal hostilities and investigate this Lahabria. Learn all we can of him and his designs. I dread to the Eek. Tataru. The soul has shown up. A self and Thanalan. <clears throat> At long last, this one finds walking one mangler. This one is most dependable of these ones. Is sent by Elder One Frixio to help walking ones. This one is called Neraxia. This one comes as a friend. Let these ones be friends. Pleasure to meet you, Norexia. Into the walking sands. Right, I'll be right back. I heard something. Then. You can watch commercials. Sand pumpkin. Pumpkin sit, firecracker sit, sit, firecracker. But thick as you are, pay attention. The shape of an L on her forehead. <laughs> But thick as you are, pay attention! The shape of an L on her forehead. <laughs> Pumpkin sit. Pumpkin sit. Firecracker sit. Good boy. Sit. Good boys. The shape of an L on her forehead. Not time yet, pumpkin. <laughs> Not time yet. Crashing noise, no idea what it is. Maybe we'll find out, maybe not. This happened before. Yes, Nataru is as ready to express her fright as she is to express everything else. Not all of us are forged to the same steel as you, I'm afraid. But it all but it takes all kinds to make a family. And it pleases me to no end to see ours continues to grow. One by one the people of Eorzea are beginning to unite. Nagler, drawn to the hope that chimes with me. 
yet a darkness threatens to engulf this light. Never have I doubted the action's presence, but they that but that they have grown to so brazen as to carry out their work in plain sight fulfills me with a sense of deep foreboding. Ten more tickets to Oh, John. And Philia would have you investigate the mysterious Mojave. I am afraid that there's no rest for the weary mangler. We must delve further into the motivations of the masked man, the Ashen known as Lahabri. This is an ideal moment to do so while our hands are not bound dealing with another primal. At present, we know little and less about the Ashens, only that destruction follows in their wake. I should not be surprised if these beings are behind the chaos that racks the realm. If my, feels, my fears prove to be reality, we must do all in our power to stop them. Earlier, I sent word to each grand company to solicit cooperation. The immortal flames responded to the effect that they have information on a potential sighting. This is intelligence that we can ill afford to ignore. Go speak to Flame Commander Swift of the Hall of Flames in Olda to inquire further. How you go about your investigation thereafter, I leave wholly to your discretion. But whatever you do, never forget that we are dealing with the, the, the unknown. It's, you cannot take too many precautions. Be safe, my dear. sighting of this rogue near the eastern thumb line. The brass blade stationed at High Bridge describes him in detail and he alerted us to suspicious activity. I would point you to the witness, but I'm afraid he died not two days ago, slain by an arriving horde of Chichuan. Fate can be a cruel mistress, but do not be too quick to despair. Being situated on a trade route, High Bridge sees its fair share of travelers. Folk all, always coming and going, and some among them in the world have caught a glimpse of the time. You could do worse than to speak with a merchant named Hihibaru. The fellows always starve for customers, and he'd no doubt welcome your attention, whether or not you have the coin or the money to spend. Ah, he's another one that's taking challenge. Let's get one quick challenge with him. Alright. See what you got. Oh, you took my box. We're looking for chaos. That means they choose the card.
have it like darkness by driver. Welcome to High Bridge, Adventure. Whatever you seek, I, Penny Peru, can provide it, probably. You're after a masked man. Mm -hmm. Not sure I have one of these in stock. Oh, <laughs> you're after a masked man. Well, why didn't you say so sooner? Such an individual might have featured in one of my many rumors I've heard. If you linger a while, may I feel here, you'll learn a thing or two, eh? Wants to help you find me. When the Order of the Nogfall began excavating the ruins below, I had hopes that High Bridge would turn into a bustling hub for pilgrims. But thanks to the nine endless policemen raids, folks are too afraid to come within a long of here. I sold everything I owned to get my venture started, and I'm willing to give up without making an earnest effort to speak it up. But if things keep going as they are, I'll be bankrupt before the moon is through. Whining won't do me any good, though, so for my business to survive, we need business. Speaking of which, perhaps you'd like to browse my wage. Spend a bit of coin to help me struggle with it. The mask me, ah, I'll take your bloody mask man. I know what I said before, but vague rumors are all I've got. If you want to know about me, go up and ask me the questions. Have 
Have I seen a masked man wearing a dark robe? No, I haven't, nor do I wish to. Since this is bad enough without shady characters with me. Folk have been giving Highbridge a wide berth because of all the teacher raids. None but the most devout of pilgrims are willing to come here anymore. From your expression, I would take it even when I'm much abuse. Look, I'm sure sorry for my rudeness earlier. It's just that things are tough for us merchants at the moment. The teacher and raids are so constant, so organized, we're beginning to suspect that some of them are just bringing them up. I tend to put my own welfare first, like most of us do, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I promise to keep an eye out for your last play. I'll see or hear anything you'll be the first to. information that we should have We finally got some honest to good information on your last man. Why so confident? Because I saw him with my own two eyes. I was out on for an evening stroll, minding my own business when I noticed a column of smoke rising from the cliff over that falls respite. Curious, I took myself there to find the masked man. Your masked man, I'm sure of it, standing by a fire. It, uh, as if in the answer, some teacher appeared soon after when the group began talking at length. I'm afraid I was too far out of earshot to hear much of anything. After the group had dispersed, an idea came to me. If you were to use this small grain coal to start a fire, you might be able to arrange a similar meal. It will be dangerous. I shouldn't go. But you prove yourself more than a match for a pack of rats. So what do you think? That's some sound reliable advice, even if I do say so myself. Well worth all the lingering about and can do it, don't you say? Alright, we got to cross and then we're going to cross.
So soon, were you able to find any clues leading to your last man? This scroll that bears the prayer to Ragal, the destroyer. In case you're unfamiliar, Ragal is the guardian deity of Ala Nigga, which is currently under guardian rule. It's highly uncommon for folk of other nations to revere him. I wager my last kill that your assailant was an Ala Nigga. It seems. This vast plan of yours is well, very well connected. You must confess the merchant in me and these such a diverse network of contacts. That self same merchant also senses to your head. The darkness inside, so are you certain you'd rather not take him as nice and slow here at average? Suggestion on helping the investigation. The Alamedian bandit in bad and running room. Is somehow connected with to our next community history. So it stands to reason if we pick up the trail again and have to go head toward Little Alamigo over in the southern tunnel. Just as you know what to expect, the settlement is the favorite destination of those refugees who couldn't well adapt to life in Oldie. Yet the hearts of the Indians are said to be barren as the wasteland. And for the intents and purposes, it's a lawless place. Be prepared for a not so warm one. Now, I'm not certain how much of a help she will be, but it just so happens I have a daughter who has her not relocated to little Alamiga. Her name is Kihira, and it shouldn't hurt to seek her out first. And while you have her attention, I'd be obliged if you could send my love. Not a day goes by, so they don't think about it. I suppose this is it then. I had hoped that you would linger here a little longer, call some friends, spend some coin, what have you, but something tells me you're destined for greater things. Wherever it is you end up, I wish you the best. Alright, we have not. So I guess I could go back to old one and do these. Oh, I could go down here. I'll go south and take a boat. Alright, well, that's the plan. I'm not going to do that right now. I think what it will do is I'll let it be a quick video today. Um, and I don't know if anyone else is raiding or not on Twitch. I can't wait right now to see that, so I'll go ahead and just put it that now. Have a wonderful week and see you guys later.